Hi, and welcome back to our channel Summaries of a Bookworm. Your number one place for all who need or like to listen to book summaries. Let's start with the book summary of today. Look Back in Anger begins on a lazy Sunday afternoon in the mid-1950s in a one-room attic apartment in a town in the English Midlands. Jimmy Porter and his business partner, Cliff Lewis, are reading the Sunday papers as usual while Jimmy's wife, Allison, irons. Jimmy is yelling at everyone and everything around him, including Cliff and Allison, who seem to take his rage in stride. What is it that makes Jimmy so enraged? Critics cite Jimmy's famous speech near the end of the play, there aren't any good, brave causes left, to support a political reading of Look Back in Anger, implying that Jimmy's anger stems from his disappointment that England's faded Edwardian glory can no longer be real and felt with conviction and enthusiasm. This interpretation is supported by an earlier passage in the play in which Jimmy waxes nostalgic about Allison's father, Colonel Redfern's Edwardian world. All homemade cakes and croquet, bright ideas, bright uniforms, what a romantic picture. Jimmy admits that, if you don't have your own world, it's rather pleasant to lament the passing of someone else's. Jimmy sees only political decay and the pretense of continued health in his modern England. Jimmy, a 25-year-old intelligent, articulate, and educated man, has been unable to find work that matches his skills, so he makes a meager living running a street corner candy stand with Cliff as his partner. Part of him strives for greater success, as evidenced by his frequent offstage jazz trumpet riffs, but part of him distrusts success because he does not trust aspiration in a country where aspiration is associated with all that is false and hollow. Jimmy lashes out at all the self-important people around him from his demeaning social position. His rage is directed at everything associated with British bureaucracy, but it, unfortunately, spills over into the mistreatment of his wife and his friend Cliff. A psychological and domestic interpretation of the play frequently emphasizes Jimmy's grief over his father's death. Jimmy was 10 years old when his father died, and he spent a year watching him die. The rest of the family didn't seem to care for him, and Jimmy notices a similar lack of sensitivity in Allison. He refers to her as, Lady Pusillanimous, meaning cowardly, a monument to non-attachment, and wishes, in one of his verbal tirades, that some catastrophe would shake her out of her slumber, even if it was something horrible like a child dying. This is exactly what happens, and the tragedy serves as an ironic reconciling force in their marriage. Other interpretations of Jimmy's rage exist, but his complication stems from the fact that the precise source of his discontent is unknown. In fact, audiences and critics alike find Jimmy compelling because the depth of his pain defies categorization. Jimmy's rage subsides at the end of the play, but only because his conflict with Allison is resolved at a high cost. When Allison discovers she is pregnant, an old friend, Helena Charles, comes to stay with the porters, and Jimmy's badgering becomes more intense, his harassment eventually becomes directed toward Helena. In response, Helena persuades Allison to leave Jimmy and return to live with her father, and Allison does so. At the end of Act 2, however, Helena is drawn to Jimmy by some strange attraction and offers herself as his mistress. Act 3 begins on a Sunday afternoon, with Jimmy and Cliff once again reading their Sunday papers. Helena has now taken Allison's place at the ironing board, mirroring the scene from the beginning of the play. The conflict is resolved and the play concludes when Allison returns, having lost both the baby and her fertility. Helena leaves and returns Jimmy to Allison in a scene that some critics find unmotivated. Jimmy and Allison reconcile at the end of the play, in part because Jimmy is satisfied that Allison's pain has brought her more in tune with his own suffering. The reconciliation is rife with ambiguity. Have Jimmy and Allison saved their marriage, or have they simply hidden from problems they can't face and handle? Look back in anger's enduring quality is that either of these readings, as well as others, can be defended. Thank you for listening to our book summary. I hope we sparked your interest in the book. Please let us know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up. Do you want to listen to more book summaries? Subscribe to us and you will get a notification every time we publish a new summary. Bye bye and see you next time.